Hello. Well, you may have guessed by this point that today's video is about Ryzen. So um, let me move these out of the way. Yes, we've been doing some testing on Ryzen, Ryzen third generation. I know people get mad when you call it Ryzen 3 because technically there's a processor called a Ryzen 3. Uh, this is technically Ryzen third generation. Now, um, if you want to see videos on performance in other games or Adobe Premiere, Cinebench, all that stuff, there's a million people out there doing that. I'm not going to bother with any of that. I'm just focusing on performance in X-Plane because almost nobody else is doing that. So we ran some tests and we're going to go over those in just a minute, but I want to talk about the Ryzen lineup real quickly. Um, from the bottom of the stack to the top of the stack, the clock speeds really don't change much. And therefore, you really don't see much variance in performance in X-Plane. So, like, the, the chip I'd probably recommend is the 3600X. It's a $250 chip. You can go all the way up to the 3900X and you get basically the same results. That's because as you go up the product stack, they add more cores. But the frequency doesn't go up. And as we've talked about before, X-Plane craves gigahertz. It wants gigahertz, speed, frequency. It doesn't really care that you have six cores or eight cores or 12 cores. As long as you got about four, you're good to go. So basically all these got the same exact score in our um, frame rate testing. Now the question is, what is that score and how does that compare to Intel? That's what we're going to find out next. So as I mentioned, I tested the, um, I, I tested a previous gen Ryzen chip. I tested the current ones and I tested it with some Intel chips. What I did is I used the built-in X-Plane benchmark test that's getting a little dated now, but um, it gives you unbiased numbers. And I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the video description on how do you see that and uh, run that test. Um, but the bottom line is we ran that test um, on all the chips and recorded the numbers and, and averaged them all out and, and came up with a score. So the first chip we tested was the Ryzen 2600. That's previous generation, kind of in the middle of the stack of chips. And that got 34.7 frames per second, which is terrible. Um, pre as I've always told people, you know, Ryzen second gen and first gen is just terrible for our X-Plane. I'm not saying that's AMD's fault. It's just a fact. I don't know why it's terrible. It just is terrible. I'm not placing blame. And by the way, I want AMD to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with Intel. It's good for everybody, so I want that. I am not an Intel fanboy. Um, the next thing we did is we tested the 3600X, the 3700X, and the 3900X. And all of those came out to right around 50 frames per second. So we went from 35 to 50 frames per second. And if my math is right, that's like a 50% increase or somewhere thereabouts, a 50% increase in frame rate over the previous generation. Well, that's tremendous. Um, that's actually more than people are seeing in other applications. Um, and that's, be I guess, because of the uh, instructions per clock is higher on the third generation Ryzen. Also, the clock speeds are higher. When I ran that 2600 and got that 35 frames per second, it was only running 3.6 gigahertz. The other Ryzen chips were hitting around 4.2 and as high as 4.3. So that's a big jump. So you got a, high, a big jump in frequency and higher IPC or instructions per clock, and that adds up to a nice big performance boost. So again, close to a 50% performance boost over previous generation Ryzen. Now the question is, does it beat Intel? Well, unfortunately it doesn't beat Intel, um, but it comes close. The 9600K, which is the one we kind of recommend for a cost, you know, per performance thing, uh, comes in at right around 55 frames per second. So only five frames per second more. And the 9900K came in at about 58 frames per second. 
So still the Intel, if all you care about is performance in X-Plane, is still the best choice. But some of you might be willing to sacrifice 10% of your performance, which is about what you'd sacrifice, to support the red team instead of the blue team. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why we're going to offer uh, some Ryzen systems, at least one if not two. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do there. But um, in doing a little cost analysis too, just on the chip, let's take the, the i5-9600K and the 3600X from AMD. Those both go for around $250. But the AMD processor comes with the cooler. So when you have to add the cooler to the Intel, you're up to 300 versus 250 for the Ryzen. So gosh, I couldn't do that math, but what is that about 20% more money, something like that? But you're only giving up 10% performance. So in some ways you could say that the 3600X is better. So um, again, the 3600X coming in at 250 with an included cooler is like the 9600K at $300 because you have to buy a cooler. Cost about, I don't know, 20% more, something like that. But you only give up 10% of your frame rate. So that's kind of a win if you ask me. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, I recommend the 3600X because it's a six core processor. It does just as well as the eight and the 12 core that AMD offers. But if you're also gonna run applications on your machine that can leverage those additional cores, like video editing, 3D rendering and modeling, and you know, I don't know, I think Photoshop does all that well, but you know, th things that can use all those cores then maybe you do go for the 37, the, the, excuse me, the 3800X, or maybe you go for the 3900X because you're going to be running these other applications that can benefit from the additional cores. Or you're thinking, well, maybe X-Plane one day will actually be able to do more with my cores and maybe eight cores will be desirable a year down the road. I don't know if that's the case. Gaming typically doesn't um, scale well across multiple cores, but it's possible. Or maybe this move to Vulkan could somehow be a benefit. So then maybe you go for the 8-core to go up to the 3700. I believe the 3700, yeah, is an 8-core. It's the least expensive 8-core chip. And then the uh, 3800 is just a slightly higher bump in clock speed. And then, of course, the 3900X has the 12-core. Uh, the um, so anyway, that's a reason why you might decide to go up and above the 6-core 3600X if you've got other programs that can use that. So overall, big win for AMD. Uh, no, they don't beat Intel, but they're not getting creamed anymore. They're within 5 or 10% of the performance of Intel uh, in X-Plane, which is huge. Whereas if you recall before, 40 or 50% slower. 10% slower, 5% slower is a whole lot better, about 10%. So good for AMD.